second chapter. Ephesians, the second chapter. And we're going to start from the very first verse of Ephesians 2. I want you to hear God in these verses because this is Him speaking to us. and sins in which you once walked following the course of this world following the prince of the power of the air the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh carrying out the desires of the body and the mind hear God and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind but God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us even when we were dead in our trespasses made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Not a result of works. So that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. For good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. That last verse, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. I want you to look at somebody. I want you to tell them, I want God, I want God. to get me ready. To get me ready. Straight up, yes, sir. I want God to get 
mean ready? What do you mean ready? When I'm talking about I want God to get us ready. That means I want him to get us ready to step into what he has prepared for us. The word ready is it, it's interesting. It means prepare someone or something for an activity or purpose. God is getting us ready to step into the purpose that he has for each and every one of us. When you deal with the word workmanship, we are his workmanship. He's talking about we are his masterpiece. When you read those scriptures earlier about how we were dead in our sins and trespasses. And we were following the course of a mold of this world. We were, we had given ourselves over to the spirit that worked in, in the sons of disobedience. We were children of wrath. We were doing, fulfilling the lesson of the flesh and of the mind and following whatever thing we felt like doing. That's what we did. And then the Bible says, but God, we are his masterpiece. And when you do more research, that word masterpiece means that workmanship means masterpiece, which means poem. We are God's poetry. It is something that it is a work. Poetry is a work of art. We are the work of God's hand. We have been created in Christ Jesus and we are a product of his creativity in Christ. Believers are God's workmanship and when you think about this, when you think about how beautiful poetry is, poetry is beautiful. We are God's poem in this world. God's beauty in a world of gloom. God's fine and finished art. God has delicately made us in Christ. How wonderful it is to know that we are in Him. Someone asked Michael, 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 Michelangelo was once asked what was he doing as he chipped away at a shapeless rock? He had this big rock and he was chipping away the rock. And someone asked him, what are you doing with that rock? He replied, I'm liberating an angel from the stone. In other words, that's what God is doing with us. He is liberating us from ourselves. Yes. And he's chipping yes. away because we may not see what he sees. Yes. It's just like years ago, we was on the road. We had to get some equipment or something to haul our equipment. And we had to get a small trailer. And we went, where did we go? We didn't go to U-Haul. We know we didn't go to a place they sell trailers brand new. We went to the junkyard, and we had all they had all kind of stuff in the junkyard. Have anybody ever been to the junkyard? <laughs> Especially when your car breaks down, you go to get the pieces out of the junkyard. <laughs> and all kind of things in the junkyard. Then we we were looking and looking, and we spotted this five by seven trailer. And we looked at it. We looked at it. The fiberglass was all tore up. They had holes in the side. The tires were flat. It was rusted out. The wood was 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 um, uh, corrupt inside. It was it was just bad in bad shape. But we walked around that trailer and looked at that trailer and we said, "Let's get that one." Was everything right when we got the trailer? No. We didn't look at the trailer for what it was. 
we looked at the dream of what it was going to be after we got through with it. And when God looks at our lives and he begins to chip away, it's because he sees something that we don't see. Believers are God's workmanship and we are under construction. Yes, 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 yes. We are under construction. I am confident when God says in Psalms 138, He says, The Lord will accomplish that which concerns me. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. He, will, uh, he will accomplish that which concerns me. That's what David said. See, Spurgeon said, All my interests are safe in Jehovah's hands. God is concerned in all that concerns his servants. He will see to it that none of their precious things fail of completion. When God starts working on something, he completes it. He never gets halfway and fail. He never starts something and not take it all the way to the end. Redemptive history is a testimony of God starting something and completing something. Mm -hmm. The Word of God is a testimony from cover to cover that He has already allowed us to see the beginning yes, yes. and the ending because He never starts something and don't complete it. Yes. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that he has started something in me and he's not going to stop working. Paul said being confident of this very thing, of this very thing. He, not myself, not yourself, but he that had begun a good work. His workmanship, his poetry, he that hath begun a good work in you shall perform it or shall bring it to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. What a comfort that is to know that he has started a work and we don't have to worry. He's going to see to it that the work is complete. Yes. That's why the Word of God says, fear not. And when God begins something in us, He is going to bring it to completion. Yeah. In the Amplified Version it says, for we are God's own handiwork, His workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus. In other words, we were born anew. That we may do that we may do that we may do those good works mm -hmm. which God predestined or planned beforehand for us taking paths which he prepared ahead of time so in other words He's saying here, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. God has prepared paths yes. Amen. Amen. ahead of time yes. uh -uh. Make sure. for us. Yes. Pertaining to the work. Yes. <laughs> yes, good. That he has for us to do. Yes. That's true. Come That's on, it. work it out. He raised us from death. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Breathed into us life. Raised us and made us sit and rest in Christ in heavenly places. Yes. Far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion for the sole purpose of leading us down the paths that he has already prepared 
for the work that he's called us to. Yes. The pathway that you're walking right now has been prepared yes. by God. Yes. Long before you was ever made. Prepared beforehand, it means to it means to pre to prepare or place in readiness before. It describes the preparation as prior to the creation. So good works are the goal to which God's new creation of us looked. They are also in God's eternal plan. Before he created us in Christ, by our conversion, he had destined these good works and made them ready for us in his purpose and decree. Amen. Paul says that God has prepared these works beforehand. Let me tell you a big old secret. When I read this and started meditating on this, I got real, real excited. <laughs> because I realized that what we are doing God has already prepared. Y'all mm -hmm. mm -hmm. follow yeah. me? Yeah. Where we are right now. Oh, Jesus. Where you are right now is the pathway that God has already prepared you for so you can walk yeah, yeah, in the yeah. good work yeah, yeah. that He has yeah. predestined for you. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. yes that's sir. good, that's good, that's good. This is where some people get things mixed up because yes. they think that destiny simply means just great, big, giant work. No. The pathway that you work, work on, you have been doing good works all along. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. What would this world be or people that you know what would their lives be like if you weren't in it? Oh my God. Wow. wow. You have been doing your good works already. Oh. <coughs> I had to stop and chew on this a little bit because I sometimes, as a pastor, you feel like, eh, God, I wonder, oh. I wonder if it was really making a difference. I wonder. If, you know, it's, and the Lord begin. I begin. The more I begin to meditate upon, the more I realize that the path. I'm, I'm on a path. Yes, 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 yes. I don't know fully what's at the end of the path before He comes, but I know I'm on a path. Yes. You are on a path, and you know what? You've been doing good works. God's been bringing good works to you as you have been walking. And we haven't really been realizing that the works and the lives that we touch is good works. Mm -hmm. I read a story that says, it was an illustration. The story says, one of our interns flew to Albuquerque with me. We decided as the plane was landing that we would have some prayer together. I hadn't talked to him about this passage at all, but I was struck by the way he prayed. And he said, Father, thank you for the good works already prepared for us. For the fact that they are waiting for us to step into them and experience them. In other words, you see, God has already prepared good works for us. We just have to step into it. Mm -hmm. That's good, that's good. Whatever pathway he has for each one of us, God is going to reward each one of us as we are faithful in the path that he has yeah. called us to. Yeah, that path, yeah. yes, yes, I'll be faithful. That's good, that's good. Paul said, when he who has set me apart even from my mother's womb and called me through his grace was pleased to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the Gentiles. I did not immediately consult with flesh and blood. So in other words, he said, well, God, who has set him apart from the womb 
and called him for the sole purpose of his good works was to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. We would not be sitting here today had it not been for the preaching of the Apostle Paul. Because if we are Gentiles and God used him to reach us Gentiles, that was his good works. And think about the reward that Paul is going to receive because he was faithful in the pathway. Because Jesus already warned him. He said, he said tell Paul, he said that I must show him the many things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Paul's pathway was stamped with suffering. Jesus told the disciples, he said, have not I chosen you twelve? Jesus went on and says, you, says, I chose you. You didn't choose me. And ordained you that you may bring forth fruit and that your fruit will remain. We are his workmanship and we've been chosen unto good works. He has something for us to do. We have an assignment that he alone has prepared for us. Every one of our assignments are different, but yet the collective, because we're moving in one unit. Yes. Nobody is left out. Mm -hmm. Nobody. You are a you are a thread in a quilt. Mm. That's good. That's good. That's good. And it takes each thread that makes up the quilt is important because each thread is a part of the quilt. And God has. God has a pathway for every one of us to walk down. Amen. Amen. He has something for us to do, an assignment that he alone has prepared for us. That we should walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Now, good works, which are the divine aim of our life, shall be realized. It is implied in our and they're being designed and made ready for us in God's decree. And that they are of God originating and not of our action and merit. Is implied in the fact that we had ourselves to be made new creations in Christ with a view to them. So that, I'm saying this, so that literally in order that in them we might walk. In other words... That expresses purpose. This shows the purpose of the good works prepared beforehand. That we might walk in them. In short, we are saved not by good works, but for good works prepared in eternity past. We work not to get saved. We work not to remain saved. We work because we are saved. Now I know there's some people who work in the church and ain't saved. There's some people that get caught up in works. Did not do so much. That's what he said. The Jesus said, that day they will come to me and say, Lord, Lord, did we not do? That's right. That's right. They were caught up in the works, but they had no intimacy with him. Right. They did not have his DNA. It's a different right there. Yeah. They were just associated. They were they were the were, were the group of people that when the woman who had the issue of blood was pressing her way through the crowd and he touched her, yeah. he touched, she touched him, he said, Who touched me? And beating him said, What? All of these people thronging you and you asking who touched you? You see, there are many people in the church that just throng him. Oh God. Yes, 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 yes. They just throng him. Pumping up against him, but they're never touching. They just, just throw, they're caught up in the crowd, caught up in what's going on. But Jesus said, I, he said, virtue has gone out of me. And when you really touch him, his power comes in your life. Yes, yes. Yes. When you really touch him, a change takes place or starts taking place 
in your life when you touch him because it is impossible to touch him and not receive from him. So many people are in church, they're just thronging. They're thronging by doing works. Works don't save you. We work because we are saved. Now, if you separate the two, you, you can tell those who are those those who are saved are working. They're doing something for God. Now I know shades of gray here because you got people that are saved and they sh they should be doing something for God, but they <laughs> drag. Him. All right. So I'm not saying that they're not saved. So you look at it both ways. But then there are people who work in the church that are saved. People who work in the church, they work because they are saved. All right, but good works is what he saved us to do. Yes. Because everybody has a work. Everybody has a work. I, I couldn't help. I couldn't help but think about. Um, when I thought about this, I thought about Minister Sharon and her and Warren's conference and, and all the stuff that she went through. And, and now here it is now. You, this is so amazing. You have over 200, 300 women is going to be in one place. Think about this now. In one place. With all type of different issues. All type of different needs. But because of the pathway that she has been on, and the thing that she experienced, yes. now she's ministering to she 300 people. Now she's having behind the mic, please go on. No, no, no. But what happened, because what God is, has orchestrated in her to get people to meet the needs, because God has shown her the needs of women. Yes. She would have never known those needs had she not walked through certain yes. things. All right. The pathway yes. unto good works. Mm. People of God. Why not just in this world just to be in this world and do nothing? That's right. That's true. Some people have different intensities when it comes to work. Some people have a greater outreach, a greater reach out, a greater anointing, a greater, a greater burden. Everybody's not going to do the work on the same level. Yes. The main point I'm trying to express to you is this. God has saved you out of darkness because he has prepared a work for you to do yes, yes. that only you can do. Amen. Amen. You're the only one that can do this work that he's prepared beforehand for you to do. Mm, yeah. Nobody else can do it. Nobody else can do you. I hear Scott all the time saying, I'm going to do me. <laughs> but can't nobody do him like him. Amen. We may imitate him or try it, but we can't. We're not him. Nobody, nobody can do what you do. Nobody. He has prepared beforehand. Be, wait, let me say this. The work that he's called you to do, God didn't just think about it when you got saved. He thought about it before the foundation of the world. See, see this is right. I, I have to do more research on this because when, when, when the Lord said that your thoughts of me are as the sand on the seashore, that every single grain of sand is a thought about me. <laughs> every grain, grain of sand it's a thought that God has about you. Yeah. Mm, that's good. It blows your mind. Yes. Mm. You need to you need to go on Google and, and bring up the beach, <laughs> bring up the sand. <laughs> I remember one of the crews that scooped me a whole handful of of sand and looked at them. And then all, all the grains that ran through my finger until the, I got down to one tiny grain. I looked at that one grain and looked at the rest. I said, God, you think about me this much? What, what in the world? What? 
What, what are you thinking about me? Jesus. What is he thinking about you? And he means that and sometimes we 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 we, we, we fear, we fret, and we think that God just got us out of here. Those thoughts are innumerable. You pick up millions, probably billion grains of sand in one hand. God, my God has more thoughts about you than <laughs> and than a handful of sand. Unless you shake your head. Because that's what infinite, yes. being infinite is. Yes. We can't comprehend that. Because we are creatures of time. He is. So what I'm saying to you is your works that God has prepared for you, they're already there. Prepared. All he wants us to do is just walk. And while we're walking, he's getting us ready. It's not that you're not already working, but as you walk with him, Greater things are ahead. That's right. That's yes. right. Greater things are. Somebody say, greater things are ahead. Greater, greater things, things are, are ahead. ahead. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Ahead. Greater things are ahead. So we can't. Don't stop walking. Don't stop walking. Step into what God has for you. Take your time. God's not in a hurry. <laughs> He's not in a hurry. Take your time. God says he's going to do things. Just chill out. Let him do it. Don't be trying to help him out. Amen. If you try to help him out, we're going to mess up. Yeah. Yeah. Just let him do it. Be at peace. Because God has something prepared for us. What we're going to do, we're going to keep right on walking. We're not going to stop. Don't stop. Yeah. I don't care what it looks like. You gotta keep going. Yeah. Yes, sir. You may be suffering right now, but keep on going. Yes. 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 God may be bringing your issues in your face, <laughs> but you gotta keep going. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's real right there. You gotta keep going. You may be in the press, and you may be like the olives being pressed, the oil may be pressed and squeezed out of you. And you holler and screaming, but how Scream while you take the steps. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Just keep on going. Yeah. Just keep, just keep going because there's something that He's doing in you mm -hmm. yes, he is. Yes, he that is. that is going to affect your work that He has mm -hmm. for you. Yes, you're right, buddy. That's good. So while while He's taking you through this, just keep on going. Understand, there's, there's some good works. The good works that he's going to have you. Because you know, we all know there are times, we all know that there are times that while we're walking with God, sometimes we seem like we don't get a break. <laughs> mm -hmm. we, we. Yes, sir. Sometimes it's like we don't get a break. It just keeps going. Like the bunny rabbit. <laughs> just keeps going and going and going. The, yeah, the bunny with the, the way you, Ever ready? Mm -hmm. What what is bunny yeah. rat? Energizer. Energizer yeah. bunny. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just keep just keep right on going and going and, and just keep on. It's like it's like we don't get a break. But isn't it interesting when you seem like you don't get a break? Then God does something. Yeah. He uses you to encourage somebody. Stop and think about it. Why you go on your journey? And you going through hell, it seems like. God will bring somebody on your path. And God will pour in you, through you, to them. And their lives are enhanced and changed while you're going on your path. That's part of your path. That's it right there. That's a good work. That's a good work. Don't forget it. Don't don't take your life cheaply. Oh, wait a minute. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna yes, sir. Oh God. Yes, sir. Don't take your life cheaply. Come on. 
Don't think your life is not worth anything. Your life is more, more, more than you know. More than you realize. God delicately formed you in your mother's womb. I think it was David who said that he looked at my substance that was imperfect. And I'm going to look at them saying, he looked at your substance, not only then, <laughs> but he's looking at your substance now. Yeah. <laughs> and your substance is not perfect, yeah. Yeah. but he made you anyhow. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all hear what I said? No, he didn't. <laughs> He made you anyway. So don't be, don't take your life cheaply. Do not despise your birthright. Yes. Amen. Do not despise your birthright. Do not be an Esau and count your birthright as something that is cheap. The fact what do I mean by birthright? You're receiving his DNA is your birthright and everything that comes with that. Don't count your birthright cheap. Because the price for it was paid. And the price was great. So you are worth something. You are worth more than you know. Do I have a witness in here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Please don't put yourself in somebody else's mold. Come on, Please don't try to look like somebody else. Yeah. Throw your arms around your own self yeah. and love you. Yes. Yes. If you if you if you're too wide to just do this. <laughs> Throw your arms around yourself yes. and love yes. what God loves. Yes. 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 God loves you. Ooh, God, thank you. And He cares about you. And He's concerned about you. And he started this work in you, and he's going to complete this work in you. Can I hear an amen? amen. amen. So God, we are his workmanship. We are his masterpiece. Yes. <sighs> Created in Christ unto good works, yes. which were given to us before the foundation of the world. You are somebody in Him. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet.